For those of you who need to import another file type like a CSV file, well for those of you who don't know what that is, let me go over it briefly. Let me go ahead and click on the uh, exercises button so it can bring that uh, folder or that window to the front here. And there's the uh, sample file that I want to import. It's my booksales.csv and anything that comes after the dot is the extension. If you don't see them on your computer, well, you can go ahead and uh, watch my Windows 7 training videos on extensions to learn more about it. But in any case, CSV stands for Comma Separated Value. It means that the data is all broken up by commas, so that way it doesn't mix all the data. And the reason why this little icon has a green X is because Excel can say, okay, I can go ahead and break up the data by looking at the commas. So there's one comma, whatever comes before it, I'll put in the first cell, whatever comes after that comma, I'll put in the second cell, and then for the second comma, whatever comes after that, I'll put in the third cell, and so on. So I could double click and open this up, and it will open up the Excel program doing just that. Okay, what became before the first comma was the order ID 1 for the first record. What came after that first comma went to the second cell, then the second comma after that, the third cell, and then so on. And if you see pound signs within a column in Excel, that just means that all the data can't be displayed because it's too long to fit in that tiny column. So just hover over the right side of that column until you can see black arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then click and drag it, or double click really fast. Let me go ahead and close out of here and not save it. And to prove my point, if I open this file up in Notepad, it would show me all the commas. Like I said, Excel just says, look, in place of the commas, I'll put cells. So if I come down here, click on the Start button, go to Notepad, and then go File to Open, and then let's see, I'm in the Exercises folder, but it's not displaying it because it's looking for a text file. I want to show all files, and there it is, the book sales, comma, separated value. Double click on that, opens it up, and there we go. So there's the order ID, comma, and then, well, those are the uh, column labels, but within that same uh, column, separated by the first column, is the order ID. You see that? So we've got one, comma, then the date, which is for the sales date, comma, then the part number, and so on. So again, Excel looks at that and goes, hey, I can separate these. I can go ahead and put that in the first cell, that in the second cell, and then after that comma, between those two commas, and the next cell, in any case. To prove my point there, comma separated value. So to import that, let me go ahead and close out of the folder. Come up here, click on the external data tab. And this one's kind of a interesting import because you'd think, well, it had the Excel icon on there. I should just go ahead and click on Excel. No, just because Excel can read it doesn't mean that it's something that's part of Excel and that it would import or accept that through the Excel feature or option here. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and do it through the text file. And you can read that little pop that says import data from or link to data in a delimited or fixed width text file. Delimited, talking about delimiters, are special characters like commas, semicolons. And that was the delimited file because I had the special characters separating the data by commas. So click on text file. It says, okay, where's this at? Click on browse. It's on my desktop over in the main window. It's in my exercises folder on my desktop. Double click. And there it is. Go ahead and select it. Click open. It's pointing right to that uh, file now. And then how and where do we want to store the data in the current database once we pull the data in from that comma separated value file? We'll just go ahead and import the data into a new table. Click OK. Then up at the top it says your data seems to be in delimited format. In other words, a special character separating the uh, fields here. And that character is comma. So we'll go ahead and say delimited. Click next. And then it says, okay, choose the delimiter that separates your fields. Well, by default it selected the comma. But if it was something else, then go ahead and choose space or semicolon tab. Or type in the character if it's a dash or a hyphen. Now, as you recall in the previous training video, our first row contains column headers or field names for the data listed below each one, like the sales date, all the dates, the part number, all the part numbers. So we want to check this so we can actually separate that, the names, from the data down below so the names don't get mixed up or the column labels with the data that it's trying to represent down below. So the first row contains field names. So we check that to separate it. Go ahead and click Next. As you recall in the previous training video, you can go ahead and change the field name, the data type, if it's an integer, long integer, and you can see whether it's indexed or not and make changes there. And then if you don't want to import something, select it, check, don't import. I'm fine with this. Let's go ahead and click Next. And then Access recommends that we define a field that contains a primary key. If we don't have one to choose, then we can just let Access do it for us, in which case it added an extra field over here called the ID field with the uh, data type auto number automatically generating a number, which is interesting because if you notice, the order ID looks unique. It looks like it's automatically just side by side, but the thing that I run into here is that if I go back and I go to order ID, it says yes, duplicate's okay. 
In other words, I can't come back over here and say, okay, let me go ahead and choose this to be the primary key. I mean, I could, but it's not automatically generating the number for me. So the problem I run into is that if I'm entering in this, the next number, which let's say is 15, I mean, I, I know it goes down further, but if it cut off here at 16, I go, hmm, what's the next order ID? Is it 17, 18? I'd rather have it automatically generate for me. And maybe this is a field that I just don't import. You see what I'm saying? So go ahead and use some critical thinking there, and then we'll let Access add a primary key field for us and click Next. And then this is going to be your table for, and then we'll do lowercase tbl. Click Finish. And then, of course, if I want to save my import steps to the import folder there, go ahead and check it. And it's importing from the uh, book sales CSV file, or you can add, you know, cs.csv. Click Save. So it's always there when I click on it. There it is to import if anybody makes any changes to it. Without having me to run this uh, import wizard all over again, I can just come here and select it and click Run. Okay, close out, and there it is. My products double click, and it's all imported. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.